This tiny chemical lives in our brain. It is not serotonin. It is more important when it comes to depression. Like serotonin, it has been severely misunderstood. The more we study the brain, the more that we realize. The old research we have leaned on to treat depression is flawed, and it may even just be completely wrong. This little chemical is important, but it's just a part of the bigger problem. By the end of this video, you'll understand the true cause of most sadness and depression in the modern age, and what you can do to fix it in yourself. Does the following sound familiar to you? Imagine waking up in the morning on your day off, immediately reaching for your phone, scrolling through notifications. Maybe you get out of bed to break breakfast. Maybe not. If you eat, it's probably quick to make and process. Absolutely nothing that you grew or caught yourself. You binge on an endless stream of content. Netflix, do scrolling through Instagram, TikTok or online shopping maybe. Before you know it, several hours have passed and you're still in your pajamas. By mid-afternoon, you have a headache from all the screens. Maybe you feel guilty about wasting the day away. Maybe you don't. The day passes, you never got dressed, never went outside, and never saw anyone unless they live with you. This is daily life for many people. I have lived this day myself. Our daily lives have become a series of instant gratifications. We're constantly bombarded with small bursts of pleasure from our devices. Yet many of us feel a deep, underlying sense of dissatisfaction and even depression. Why is that? The answer lies partly in this chemical. But not because we lack it, because it's too easy to stimulate. This chemical is dopamine. You may say, wait, isn't dopamine responsible for pleasure? It's part of the reward pathway. How can it lead to repression? Yes, dopamine is part of the reward pathway in the nucleus accumbens, but its role is far more complex than we previously realized. And more research is showing that the easy stimulation of dopamine doesn't give us pleasure alone. Why? Well, is scratching an itch pleasurable? Not really. It's generally just relieving. If you wait longer to scratch it, you may feel more relief when itching it, but it's not inherently more pleasurable. Okay, what about an itch you never scratch at all? It eventually goes away, but during the time it's around, it's very uncomfortable. This is the issue. Our modern conveniences turn real problems our ancestors had into easy to scratch itches. But it's even worse than that in the modern world because companies have figured out how to solve these problems, but in very short, pleasurable ways. Because that's where the real money is. Making itch scratching a short-term pleasure, the dopamine trickles in and we're distracted by highly processed, low energy, conveniences. Processed food for the gut and screens for the mind are just a couple examples. Your phone is just a high-tech equivalent of a back scratcher. Go figure. Modern day America is just scratching itches. All day, every day. Scratching itches does not lead to happiness long term nor to growth. It fulfills no deep human needs. It just trickles dopamine and when the trickle stops, the uncomfortable itch begins until it's scratched again. This is the dopamine trap. It's a trap! We've become addicted to small, easy pleasures, leading to a hidden trickle of dopamine, not dangerous right away, but over time, our reward system becomes desensitized. This leads to feelings of emptiness and depression because the rewards we are getting are superficial and lack depth. This has another effect. Easy rewards make it harder to take part in activities that require more effort, even if we know they offer more meaningful rewards. We lose the motivation to engage in activities that provide a deeper sense of accomplishment and happiness. We can break free from the cycle. To start with something popular that may work but I don't think is the best, the dopamine detox. You may have heard of it, where you completely disconnect from one or more modern daily conveniences we have. People often pick social media or their phones in general, usually for something like a month. Short-term success varies, as does long-term changes. That is why it's not the best way. Most people just go back to the way things were before. I recommend a different approach. Start with changes that are smaller, but more sustainable. For example, put your phone in the bathroom and across the room when you go to bed so you don't scroll in bed or when you first wake up. Do it for a week. Then, on your off days, when you get out of bed to turn off the phone in the bathroom, brush your teeth and go get dressed. Then go out for a 10 to 15 minute walk. You can listen to something, but don't look at your phone otherwise. Bask in the achievement of already leaving the house for the day, not to mention enjoying nature while getting your vitamin D. Now you know your itches better than me. If you eat too much processed foods, add unprocessed fruits and vegetables to every meal. If that's too hard, 
Start with one unprocessed meal or even snack a day and then expand. If you binge shows or social media, get apps that limit you to a few hours a day. Now, do you really need to be notified for every email, especially on your off day? Silence or remove all notifications on your phone except calls and maybe text. Feeling lonely? Make it a daily habit to greet one stranger you see on your walk. Well, maybe that's too scary. Well, reach out to a person you already know and see how they're doing and see if they want to meet up. They're probably lonely too. Make it a habit to keep your phone on silent in your pocket when you talk to them or anyone. When you feel bored, embrace it. Boredom is now a skill to cultivate in the modern age. Here is the real truth. Depression does not just come from a lack or dysregulation of chemicals in the brain like older research suggested. We know because we have seen antidepressants alone are rarely enough to cure depression. The truth is, it's how we're living our lives that leads to depression. Chemical imbalances may occur, but trying to fix them alone is not enough. We need to fix ourselves. True happiness comes from meaningful experiences and relationships, not from scratching itches with modern day conveniences. If this resonated with you, consider liking and subscribing and definitely leave a comment. I enjoy interacting as we grow this community to change ourselves and our health for the better.